What is up everybody? Welcome back to another one. My favorite time of year has come September 1st. September 2nd is the opener and that is tomorrow. Drove the cruiser through the night. Uh, it's like a 17 hour drive and we made it. So a little jet lag, but we're here. Gonna shoot the bow, go do a little scouting, and then uh, got seven days to get it done. So let's see what we can do out here in Colorado. It's the last year of OTC. Wanted to take full advantage of it and uh, see if we can't put a bull on the ground. We're a, a hair low at 40. Um, moved it up to 20. Let's see what it does. These elk, I usually come the first week of September every year here in Colorado and up high I'll get into bugles but normally down low uh, which is where I think we're going to be hunting uh, they're not going to be bugling yet so um, could potentially be looking at you just never know what that could be a, a long shot or a short shot but we're going to be calling any bulls in um, but you never know we may move high country in two days so I think tomorrow we're going to start out pretty low and uh, hunt some stuff that I've hunted in the past we can go scout it out and see what there is Bulls out right there. If that bull comes into 20, he's gonna get smoked down. One more, and I think we're gonna be good. It's getting uh, what time is it right now? Took a couple hour nap this morning. It's 4.15, it's time to go. We've got about an hour drive. Um, but these elk, it's so hot out here in Colorado right now. They're bedded down for the most part throughout the day. And then they'll start coming out about an hour before dark. Ooh, I hit fletchings. Let's go check it out. I'd say that's a pretty good group at 20. I'll take that all day. 20 yard group. I think we're good. Let's go do some scouting. Uh, the spot that we're going to in the morning, I think we're gonna go, we're gonna go scout another spot. And if we don't see something crazy there that we love, we're gonna go to another spot that I've been going to for years. Never connected on a bull, but I've always seen bulls. So um, unless we find bulls tonight, we're probably gonna go there just cause I know that they use this little pocket to travel through and uh we'll see what happens so we're gonna go do some scouting i'm dialed in shout out to 80 40 and 20 um everything seems to be good so y'all stay tuned hopefully we can get on something in the morning I'll see you guys when it's dark we're getting up about three in the morning to get to where we're going and uh i'll catch you then guys so i'm gonna walk you through this video a little bit we get into the actual hunting action uh so I've been hunting Colorado archery the first week of archery for the past six years. And uh, this year was no different. Came up alone and uh, met up with my buddy Christopher. And uh, the goal is always to harvest a bull with my bow. So that was the plan on this trip. So got the bows dialed in and uh, went out that afternoon to a, a spot we had seen elk um, in the past. And we got up there. And actually did spot some elk, one legal bull, and uh, five or six cows. So got back to the house, and uh, the first day is always a questionable day on where you want to start. We always hunt this one spot every year, uh, and it always holds elk. And we decided that we were going to go in there blind, uh, not scouting it at all, not seeing what, what's even there. Uh, we just know where these elk travel, so we are going to go up there and uh, check it out and see what happens. So... Uh, got up at three that morning, drove about an hour and a half, and uh, this is where we start our hike in the morning. Uh, this is opening morning, first day, first light, and uh, this video will roll out, and then we'll do some more explaining. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. It is opening day of elk season here in Colorado. Here with Chris. You gonna bring those Maven 18s? I think, I think I better try them out. Well, I think we're. I'll put them up here. So, guys, we're uh, about to hike in. Got up at 3 this morning. And uh, surprisingly, I think we're 
in our little spot alone. So hopefully it stays that way. But y'all stay tuned. Hopefully we get into some elk action. roll up on this knob that we've hunted previously uh, in past years and you can kind of see where these elk are coming out and uh, going up into the cedars to bed and the sun's barely peeking up and, and Christopher spots two cows and what looks to be a bull and then I spot a group of about 20 elk uh, probably three or four hundred yards to the right of them couldn't see much at all it was still super dark and uh, everything happened so fast, but the two elk and supposedly the bull were headed straight to where we could cut them off. Uh, we didn't, at that time, we didn't know what kind of bull he was or anything. So um, we let it get a little lighter. And by that time they were almost to the cedars from the sagebrush. And right when that light hit, we could see what kind of bull this actually was. Um, this was not a bull that I was ever expecting to see out there. Uh, this is not a bull that I was coming here to hunt at all. We had not previously scouted this elk. Uh, it just happened. We just happened to be in the right spot at the right time. So I look at Christopher and I go, that is a monster. We have to make a move. So where we're at right now, our wind is blowing in our face. So we're going to try to go down this ridge, cut them off on the next ridge where we think they're going to pop up and over. So we go over the back of this ridge and, uh, have a little opening area where there's some scattered cedars and I think that they could possibly come over that ridge and go through those cedars to go up the actual mountain to where they're going to bed for the day. I'm sitting there next to the cedar tree. I'm shaking just talking about this. Um, waiting for these cows and that bull to come out in front of us and I feel a tap on my shoulder. It whispers to me to turn around. The second I turn around one of the cows stops in her tracks she has me locked down and uh, right then I knew if she barked it was over. What felt like 20 minutes, that cow sat there and stared at me with my bow doing this the whole time. And finally she moseyed off and her cow followed her, stopped, looked at us for about five seconds. She moseyed off and as soon as that calf's butt went through that window, I drew back and uh, this is how it goes down. solid. That looks solid. There's just tracks. Bro. 
I hope it was solid, dude. That's a giant. Yeah, that's a lot bigger than you look coming across in the dark. Please be a good shot. Hey, look. I mean, right to left. Here you go. I got blood right here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I couldn't oh. range for you. It's okay. What pin did you use? He's not going anywhere. Dude, that's a freaking stud. I made that sound. He just doesn't know it. I hope so, man. There. Right. Oh, guys. Just shot my biggest archery bull ever. It was crazy. We were, they were coming up, and we thought we were perfect to cut them off. And Chris was like behind us, behind us, and I turned around. A cow saw me move. Thankfully, she didn't bark or anything. Kind of moseyed off, and then another cow came, looked at me, kept going. I replayed the footage. To, you can't really see the kill shot. You can see his antler tips, but he was at 40 yards, and uh, I absolutely smoked him. I mean, we saw blood right behind the shoulder. Perfect pass through. I'm going to go look for my arrow right now. But anyway, we saw him sick walking. And we got up on a ridge to try to get another shot. And there was two other hunters right below him, and they bumped him. And we got him, got sight of him again. And he went behind this cedar, uh, cedar thicket, and we haven't seen him come out. So we're going to give him hours. Um, we're just watching right now to make sure he doesn't come out of that cedar thicket. And then uh, see what happens. But man, what an incredible morning it has been. Opening morning, OTC, he's an absolute monster. Uh, I think he's a seven by six. You see him? So we're gonna keep watching and then uh, go look for my arrow. Iron wheel, baby. Beautiful iron wheel. point we meet up with uh these two gentlemen and uh they saw my bull they didn't know that it was uh the bull that i had shot they i guess they didn't see that it had blood coming out of its shoulder but um we go back up on the ridge spot him again and he's hurt really bad just taking two steps head swaying thought he was gonna fall down there um unfortunately he didn't we waited up there for about two and a half hours uh and those two gentlemen they went off to the right of us down the ridge where we had originally shot that bull they were going to go across and uh see if they could relocate that group of 20 that came behind them give it about two and a half hours without seeing him he went he went behind some thick cedars we thought we may, he may have bedded down there so we make about a half a mile walk around keeping the wind in our face the whole time and uh find his tracks where we last saw him. There's no blood whatsoever, but there was some foamy stuff that it had been coming out of his mouth. So we got on his track, not one drop of blood, um, tracking for about 300 yards. And I looked down and one of those guys had an arrow knocked. So I whistled at him, put my hands up, like, are you, like, do you see my bull? And he points at him, points at where he saw him. So they went over the ridge over and could see back at where we were walking and that bull was bedded uh, down in a ravine. So met back up with those guys down the ridge to where they last saw him. And uh, the bull jumped out and, uh, and ran over another ridge. So point, I know, okay, this bull is not dead. Uh, he's really sick. He ran over the ridge, me and Chris, as fast as we could up and over the ridge. As soon as we got to the top of that ridge, that bull was so sick, he was standing there head still swaying, standing at 85 yards, turned broadside, going right in his low, but I put it right there, right behind his shoulder. And uh, 
he went about 60 yards from there and bedded down. So I come down and around and uh, get to 45 yards and end up sticking him two more times uh, before he expired. But Seventy-five. Ew. Ew. Yeah, look He's got a devil's pine on the left. He's expiring right now. Met these guys on the on the mountain. This is Cody and Double. Dominique. And uh, me and Chris got on his trail. We started finding a little bit of blood and some foamy coming stuff out of his mouth and. We met up with them again. We spotted him. They spotted him on the other ridge. And then we saw them tracking below us and met up with him. He's like, yeah, we saw that bull. So we came down, we followed it, stayed on his tracks and put another one in him at 85 and then put two more in him at 45, right in the heart. I mean, I don't, these elk are insanely tough. He's kicking, but he's down. He's, he's down, he's down. He's trying to catch his breath. He could. He's, he's man. down. We just got to let him sleep totally. And Oh, I see the arrow is still in him. <laughs> Devil time. That's unbelievable right there. Lost for words, guys. That is. Yeah, that last one. Oh, oh, the lowest part. You probably missed his heart, but Ooh. you definitely got. You got to. Three or so in the end. Speechless, the biggest bull I've ever killed. Uh, by far the biggest bull I've ever shot with my bow. An incredible experience. Can't thank Chris enough for uh, going out there with me and, and helping me pack out. Dude, four, five, six, seven. He's a seven by seven, legit. Oh my goodness. Thank you, buddy. He's Yeah, he's got more mass than the one I got. Mm -hmm. A little bit of length on the one I got, a little bit of width. It's a giant. He's got definitely got the mass. Yeah. He's got those moose palms almost up there. Prayed this morning that we had uh told Told Chris we had a, had a good feeling about this area. And uh, prayed this morning, and it, that's unbelievable. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> We've been on this for five years. Five this area. years this area. Yeah. All right, I need to FaceTime my dad and my wife.
All right, guys, we got it all cut up. Now it's time to load the packs. Can't thank these guys enough for helping us because yeah, it would take, take me and Chris all day to get this sucker out of here. Whoo! Big boy. So we are back from probably the best elk hunt of my life. Biggest bull. I don't know. We'll see. Biggest bull so far with the bow. And uh, I'm back before we head out for the next elk hunt. So we're gonna make some elk for dinner. This is one of our favorite ways to make elk, especially cuts that aren't backstrap or tenderloin. This is literally just a muscle from the back ham. Uh, the back leg, somewhere in the back leg, I break it down into muscle groups. And I like to freeze it like this in the made with meat bags. Um, and then I can pull it out, I can make jerky out of this, I can do poppers, I can do a roast. Uh, or I can cut it up and do ground out of it as well. So I like to vacuum seal my stuff in muscle groups. But basically what we're gonna do is just slice really thin. I'm gonna cut this in half. Just cause it's a bigger piece of meat to work with. See how the grain's going this way? We're gonna cut against the grain, just like this. We're gonna cut a bunch of strips just like that and we're gonna make poppers out of them. So we got jalapeno, uh, cream cheese, bacon, and some mullet man steak. And we're gonna fire the old camp chef up. Got some macaroni and cheese on the oven. And uh, I'm gonna get these made. I'll show you how I make them here in a second once I get all this meat cut. And then we'll throw them on the smoker. And the best part about making these poppers is you're cutting the meat so thin that nine times out of 10, your meat is gonna be pretty tender. So you don't have to worry about using your good cuts of meat to do this. All right, so take you a little slice of meat, a little, this is just cream cheese with diced jalapenos in it. Put a little dollop of that in there. Roll it up. We're not gonna have enough bacon for all this meat, but it's just as good as that. Stick a toothpick through that, season it, and it's just as good like that. This is some pretty thick bacon, so making them. Real nice and big, but there you go. Put that on the plate and uh, we'll throw that on the smoker here in a minute. The poppers are done and ready. We made us a little wasabi and soy sauce mixture. It's just soy sauce and wasabi. Actually, Christopher's recipe that I stole from him the very first time I met him, I think it was the first night that I came into camp and he made this with elk and we've loved it ever since. So Chris, thanks for being there with the big bull and thanks for giving me an awesome recipe. But one out of 10, gotta dip it in that sauce. Let's see what it tastes like. Delicious, super tender for elk, just a random muscle group in elk. I gotta give that like a solid nine four. It's delicious, if you've never done it, try it. I eat it with some soy sauce with a little bit of, um, with a little bit of wasabi in there as well. So we're gonna sit down and eat our dinner. So enjoyed this video. I know I'll look back at this video forever, probably for the rest of my life. Um, and that bull is definitely going on the wall. And definitely filled my freezer and will be feeding my family for the next year or so. So thank you for all the support on the channel. Uh, if you're new and haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And if you are a subscriber, please hit the notification bell so uh, we can get more videos out to you guys whenever they post. Until next time, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and remember, eat good.